Hey, what's up everyone? Bennett Profixer, and today on the channel we have a pretty interesting repair for you. Today we're going to be showing how to remove the battery when it's extremely swollen. This one just came into a repair shop. It's an iPhone 6 Plus with an extremely swollen battery. It's actually broken the OtterBox case and started to push the screen off. However, it seems to work fine and all the touch seems to be there. So all we have to do is remove the screen and replace the battery with an awesome X cap from Injured Gadgets. You can pick these up. I've linked them up in the description below as well. Uh, along with everything else on the workbench is linked up there as well. So be sure to check that out. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video and comment below what you'd like to see in future videos. Without further ado, let's get started on this slightly dangerous but extremely bloated iPhone 6 Plus battery. Here in front of me on the bench, I have an iPhone 6 Plus that came in for repair. The battery is extremely bloated and it's actually pushing the screen off and has broken the case in multiple spots because it is so swollen. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I would take in order to safely handle something like this in your store. Always definitely let the customer know um, that when working with something of this particular nature, that it can become a more lengthy and difficult repair. So definitely quote probably double the time what you'd normally quote to give yourself a non-rushed repair so you don't try to fly through it and end up making any mistakes. The first thing that I would do with this one here is carefully remove the case. Seeing that this one here does have broken edges, we do need to carefully remove it because we don't want the screen to pop off. We don't know if the dock screws are still holding it in or if the case is doing much of that still. Uh, but we do wanna carefully remove it and just kinda work around the edges, of course, or whatever kind of case you have. And um, we'll kind of inspect from there. And it's actually pushing <laughs> the other side off as well. So um, this particular repair, we actually did quote a screen, um, just in case the screen ended up not working properly afterwards because once it's flexed so hard for so long, and then it deflexes, that can cause some issues in certain cases. Uh, so we did quote um, a screen as a possibility as well. Uh, taking a look at this one here, it definitely looks like it is extremely swollen um, and it's extremely pushed away from the actual housing. So what we're gonna do in a situation like this, I would definitely hold down at the bottom of the screen because we do want to remove those dock screws and not have it pop out at us. But first, let's go ahead and turn this off. So while that's powering off, we can go ahead and get our uh, pedal of screwdriver hold the bottom of the screen pretty tightly um, because like I mentioned before we don't want this one popping off and uh, just kind of causing any kind of abrupt movement that could cause damage. So there we go. Once we got that one out it did actually jump up a little bit. Um, just kind of let it expand you know very slowly and um, and and as we can see here, it's definitely got a bit of a lift to it. Looks like an OEM battery that is in the device, so it doesn't look like it's ever been replaced before. So we're going to go ahead and go through the normal process that we go through for this. So uh, first things that we always do is go ahead and isolate the battery, which means unplugging it. Go ahead and take out both of those screws and place those off to the side. Keep them in the right order because they are different lengths depending on uh, which screw you're taking out and um, exactly where they go. So definitely be careful with those. If your screwdriver becomes demagnetized like mine, we do have a couple different videos on the channel showing how to use a demagnetizing or a magnetizing block. Um, essentially, you just put the screwdriver in there, wiggle it around a little bit, and it magnetizes it once again. Uh, pretty cool process, but we linked up that video as well in the description below, so you can find that and uh, easily magnetize your screwdrivers in case they come demagnetized. All that I'm gonna do at this point is just unplug the battery. Um, I'm not going to try to pull it out. Um, in a situation like this one here, um, I am going to remove the screen as well. In most cases, I don't always remove the screen um, just because of time's sake and just because of um, just everything that goes into it. We normally leave the screen on, uh, but we will be removing it for this one because it is a little more difficult to repair. Perfect, got all those deconnected. And um, the screws that go in the iPhone 6 series, especially if you get them out of order, you can cause long screw damage, which is actually incredibly common. So keep those all in the proper order so that you don't cause any kind of damage that way. Our main focus though is going to be the safety of removing this battery properly. Um, in a situation like this one here, 
Uh, there are a couple different things that you can do at this point. Some may say put it on a heat mat, others may say, you know, use some kind of liquid. The best case scenario that I can think of that would um, work in most cases is going to be using a little bit of alcohol. Um, a little bit of alcohol is going to condition the actual um, adhesive strips, also going to lubricate them so that they're going to not only be stretchy and pliable, but they are going to slip out a little bit easier than if you did have one um, that was um, secured in and old and dry and just kind of uh, falling apart. In a situation like this one here, the best thing that I can think of, and in my experience, is to use a tiny bit of isopropyl alcohol that is gonna work really good to condition the adhesive strips that are in there because with this particular age of device, they can become old, brittle, and dried out. Um, a little bit of alcohol in there will help to um, not only just kind of rejuvenate them and to condition them, but it is going to make them a little more slippery so they will slide out easier and not get caught. That is probably the main issue with um, battery pull tabs breaking is that they are pulled unevenly, but also they catch on the way out. And every single time that they're gripping, uh, they're causing undue stress on the actual tab itself. So the way that I do that is hold the phone up this way and just drip a little bit of alcohol in there. Um, you don't want to put too much because if you do put too much, it can actually go all the way into the camera if you have your phone tilted up like this here. Um, once it's um, soaked in there for just about five seconds or so, you can slowly start to pull um, these little tabs out. Especially in an older vise, you do want to go as slow as possible. You can wrap a screwdriver around this or a tweezer and um, rotate it, which definitely helps quite a bit. Uh, this will help to make it very even and consistent with pulling out the tabs themselves, um, which is one of the best practices and actually the OEM um, way whenever they remove the strips in their own store when they replace the batteries. And I do have to say that using a tweezer, we have never broken one of the tabs. If you just start to pull it out like this, it can accelerate uh, the removal process quite a bit. Uh, but the big issue that you run into there is sometimes it pulls too quickly and it does break the tab. For the other two tabs, I do recommend using tweezers as well. Um, I also do recommend removing any of the adhesive that is wrapped around your tweezers uh, because what will happen is the tweezer becomes larger and then it's going to accelerate the speed at which the actual adhesive strip is pulled out of the device, which once you get down to that third one, you may become antsy to get that out, to get the repair done. And then also the added distance that the um, that the adhesive having to travel around the actual tweezer at that point, it can cause them to break. And I've seen that multiple times with multiple technicians. So definitely cut it off each time and then follow the same process as you go into the next tabs. Um, I always do twist backwards because that will be wrapping up the adhesive from underneath the tweezers, which makes it come out more of a straight line from the bottom of the battery. So just go ahead and do that to the other ones and, um, and that should help to pull it out as well. And you can uh, and as you get to the last tab, and if you are pulling it out, as you can see, I am pulling this out very slowly. Um, using the own elasticity of the tab itself to allow it to be removed. So as you pull it out, you'll notice that you get to a point and the tab kind of continues to self-release. That is absolutely key to making sure that you don't pull it too fast. If you could imagine how fast the tab is being released, if you're just spinning the tweezers, it's pretty slow. So if you're moving here six inches, that was probably six millimeters in the same time if you were um, just twisting on the tweezers. So definitely, you know, go very carefully with this and uh, pull it out. Also hold on to the battery or else sometimes you can shoot the battery across the workbench and uh, with a bloated one that would not be too great of an idea. So here we go, just pulling out this last one and uh, gonna go to make our tweezers readily available right away just by cutting this off and having them ready for any other thing that we'll need them for. So tweezers are ready if we do need them and the battery is safely released. It does have a little bit of alcohol on the backside, which is completely okay. Alcohol will not cause any kind of damage to the batteries or cause any kind of issues this way. Um, so definitely use it, but do be careful of the surrounding components, especially sensitive ones like cameras to not get those soaked with any kind of alcohol. 
Uh, this particular battery is definitely very bloated, so what we do recommend is putting a piece of tape across the actual battery itself so it doesn't short circuit and then gently placing it into a battery cycling bin that you do take to be recycled frequently and often. So we're going to place that one off to the side and now we're going to replace our new battery. So what we're going to do is um, go ahead and take your battery and we did verify our voltage using this uh, little Kaizy uh, board here which we do really like. Um, the voltage is right at 3.84, which if we look at the battery itself, it's supposed to be at 3.82 um, to power on the device. So here we go. This one's all working, as we can see here. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and take this and place it into the device itself. So go ahead and pull the little tabs off the bottom, and we're going to go ahead and line this up in the device as well. Now uh, the best thing that you can do is make sure that your battery tab is bent properly, that it's got the little snake in it. Um, you can compare it to your original one and make sure they're bent very similarly. And then what we do with this here is I do connect up the battery itself just to get the battery tab in the proper spot. Uh, then we're going to slide the battery over to kind of squish the little, the little snake in the connector itself and let the battery go down into the proper compartment. Uh, this ensures that not only is our connector in the right spot, but that there's no pinching going on in the little bent area by the connector. And then we do kind of massage the battery in in order to make sure that those little um, adhesive strips are connected properly to the housing itself. Go ahead and unplug the battery to make sure that we don't uh, cause any kind of short circuits or anything like that whenever we're connecting the new screen. Go ahead and take your new screen and start to connect up all those connectors once again. Then go ahead and plug in your battery, making sure that everything's all plugged in. And always double check all of your connections. Now we're going to go ahead and just turn this one on, and then we're going to let it power up, and we're going to test the charge rates and uh, see how it's doing at that point. And once the device is all powered up, you can go ahead and do a full test on it, make sure that the touch is all working, and, um, and just basically make sure that all the functions have been restored. This would also be a good time to test the TriStar and anything else that would need to be tested before giving it back to the customer. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just assemble the rest of the device, putting on the battery bracket and also the screen bracket as well. Um, using this awesome tool called the iHold from Injured Gadgets will make this part of the repair process so much easier. It essentially plugs into the bottom of the device and then you can move this flexible arm to hold your screen up so that you're able to put in your screws and brackets so much easier. So we can see here, no hands needed and the screen is very safely held up and very securely as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and take the rest of our brackets and place those back into the device and secure them down with your screws. One thing to note with all of this is to ensure that you're putting the screws in the proper spots um, because if you put a long screw in a short spot, you will notoriously, you can notoriously cause, or hold on, you can cause long screw damage, which is one of the most notorious repairs for new technicians on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. So going to take in these here. Now I'm going to go ahead and place, place, going to go ahead and place this one in. The longest screw does go in the very top right. The second longest screw goes in the very top left, and then all the other screws go in their associated spots in the short hole spots. Now that we're done with all the internal screws, we're going to go ahead and release our eye hold from the screen, unplug it from the bottom and set it off to the side. Taking the screen and securing this back in the housing is pretty easy. Um, just like with any other device, you do want to be careful, but the main thing is, is insert the top in first as it does have these little hooks that hook into the top of the housing itself. And then along the side, you'll just go ahead and squeeze the bottom in to make sure that it's fitting properly and then you can squeeze the center um, and it'll clip it right into uh, the brackets themselves. Follow the same suit for the other side. Ensure that everything is sitting completely flat and that the phone is not bent in any way. And we're ready to go and install our two dock screws in the bottom. Taking your Penelope driver, you can easily put those back in the bottom. Uh, just like that. And place the second one in there as well. Even though we have tested this mid-repair and found out that everything does work properly, we are going to give it one last final test 
to ensure that it's fully working before giving it back to the customer. This is extremely important because we did open up the device, we did finish closing it, and we did turn a couple screws in the process, so there is a variable of error that could have occurred. Always making sure that your device is fully ready to go is one of the most important things that you can do in order to build trust when giving the device back to the customer to ensure that they don't come back for something incredibly piddly that could have been solved but now will last in their mind as an error on your end. If you followed all the steps in this particular video, you should be able to do most iPhone battery repairs as they're all pretty similar. Whether it is a semi-healthy battery that's not swollen or if it's an extremely swollen battery like in our case where it broke the case and push the screen off, you should be able to remove it safely and efficiently. I appreciate everyone that's still watching, and if you like this video, go and hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and please comment below what you'd like to see in future videos. But once again, my name is Ben Rosso, and I'll see you in the next video.